Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a video on how to read an MRI of the cervical spine. So this is a view I'll start with where we're looking straight at the cervical spine, and on this view we can see the vertebral column here, the vertebral bodies are square, and we can see if they have any abnormal curvature, any scoliosis, but we can see here there's no scoliosis, it's really straight. And we can see the vertebral bodies are these squares, and between them are these little horizontal bands. These are the, these are the discs, the shock absorbers. And also in this, you can see some anatomy of the cervical spine. All these other vertebral bodies from C3 through C7, there's seven vertebral bodies, all look the same, but the top two are different. So this is the right side, and here's the left side, these little triangles. These are the C1 vertebral body. We call this the right lateral mass of C1, left lateral mass of C1. And this vertebral body here, with this pointy thing, this is called C2. So the C2 vertebral body has this pointy thing called the odontoid process. It pokes up in between C1, and this will help the head rotate because uh, the unusual configuration up here. But the rest of these look the same. Now we take a side view. We call this a sagittal view where we can see the front over here. This is the back. This is where the head would be laying. If we slide down here, we get a look at the cerebellum. We get a look at the brain stem here. This ovoid thing is called the pons, this is called the medulla, and the medulla becomes the spinal cord that goes down through the neck. We also get a shot at this thing here, this is the pituitary gland here, this round thing, we see the pituitary stalk coming down, see the size of the gland, so if there's a pituitary mass we may see it. This little bright thing in the back is the neurohypothesis, or the posterior pituitary bright spot, that's just a normal finding, normal look at the pituitary. And then we come down here to the vertebral bodies and look here to see if the curvature is normal. And we see these vertebral bodies and remember the first two look funny. So this is the second one, this really tall one. This is the adodontoid process. And C1 on this view is really tiny looking. Here's the front of it, here's the back of it. And you can see the other ones look very different. So here's C1, looks good, C2, looks good. The rest of them look good, but there's some abnormal curvature on this patient instead of going up and then back gently, a nice gentle curve. It goes up and then it moves forwards. The head is tilted towards the front. So we know that this patient has some muscle spasm. They're tilting their head forward a little bit. And, but they, all the discs look pretty good. These vertebral bodies are the squares. And these little horizontal bands are the discs. And the next thing we do is roll off to the right side and we roll off to the left side we see these openings called foramina. And the foramina are where the nerves exit. So if we look off on the Left side down here really low, we can see the neural foramen, that little dot in the middle is a nerve, and I'll show you another view here just in a moment that shows the same thing, but now fluid, which is dark on this, you can see fluid around the base of the brain, fluid around the cord, the fluid is dark here, but the next sequence will have bright fluid. Here we go, so this is called a T2-weighted sequence. We see all the same things. You can see the pituitary stalk coming down here again into the pituitary gland. You can see the brain stem, see the spinal cord. We get another look at this, and if there's a lesion in the cord, it'll show up a little bit better on this sequence. We see the white fluid surrounding everything. We see these vertebral bodies here again. And now disc should be bright. Here's a bright disc, which means it's healthy. This disc is not quite so healthy, it's dark. And the other discs look pretty good. And again, we can see this abnormal curvature of the spine that goes forwards. And so again, the last thing to do is look at these discs and see is there any central canal, which is this middle area, stenosis, or is there any foraminal, which means these openings, any foraminal stenosis. So in this patient, we look and say, hey, this central canal looks fantastic. Wide open canal, there's fluid around the spinal cord, front and back. But now we have to roll off to the sides and look at the neural foramina. And as we roll off towards the right-hand side here, we get into uh, pretty far over and we'll look at some neural foramina. And I'll zoom this up just a little bit for effect. Let me zoom, zoom, zoom to see better. So this is a foramen here. It's filled with fat and there's a little black dot. That's a nerve. But you see how wide open that is. Big, huge foramen. Here's a nice big frame in the nerve. Big frame with the nerve. But we get down to this level and you say, wait a second. Where's that big bright fat with the nerve? All we see is darkness. So this is a disc herniation that's going off into that foramen causing a severe stenosis and pinching that nerve. And if we go down to the next one, hey, that's wide open, looks good, this looks good. This one over here looks great. So all these areas that are really bright and round are normal foramina. And this one that's just black, that's a disc right here that's going off to the sides, it's some spurring and disc material. And again, it fills that hole, fills that foramen. 
and we do that on the right hand side and we roll off to the left hand side as well and look there again and this one we see this similar thing where this disc is not so bad on the left hand side but the foramen are all open wide open except for on this side on the left and this patient did have pain on the right hand side and this disc on the right hand side pinching the nerve did explain that the last thing we do is we go through each individual disc like this and we'll look carefully from this angle and uh, look to see the central canal and the openings the foramina so I'll show you that next so this is down low this is a vertebral body here and if we come down a little bit we get into a disc here's a disc and we see the disc looks normal this is the spinal cord which looks normal you see the fluid surrounding the cord and the spinal canal filled with the fluid is nice and ovoid nice and big if we go over we can see these big holes these are the foramina these are actually very big foramina here's one on the right here on the left and the nerves come off this cord they come out through the foramen on the left out through the foramen on the right and they go off to the muscles and everything else this is another level up higher see the spinal cord see that big open foramen and over here we see the big open foramen. This is a little dark thing if you're wondering. This is a vertebral artery, this area that's black. This is just flowing blood in the vertebral artery on the left and right. You see that the right, the right is so much smaller than the left. Here's the right. And this is just a normal finding. They're really variable. Sometimes one has no flow in it. But uh, this is a left and right vertebral artery. Both of them are open. And last thing is to find that abnormal disc. So again, this is a nice wide open foramen here. See how big that is? Now we'll go down to the abnormal level. And we see the disc here and see the spinal cord right here. There's not as much fluid around the spinal cord here. And also the foramen, instead of being a nice big wide hole where the nerve comes off, we see that disc material going into the foramen and there's just no room for that nerve. So it's getting pinched in the right foramen down at this C5-6 level. So that is how to read an MRI of the cervical spine.